this is why I'm in Hollywood. Yeah. Eat your cereal, kids. <laughs> Dan Schneider is on the brain behind some of the most amazing shows that aired on Nickelodeon. But the experiences of the actors and crew on these shows were more of nightmares than dreams come true. The man behind iconic shows such as iCarly, Sam and Cat, Drake and Josh, The Amanda Show, and Victorious has been exposed on social media with a long list of accusations from fans and his former stars. And it's shocking to realize that the things he was doing, saying, posting, and promoting during his time at Nickelodeon was so wrong. Today, we're going to take a look at every creepy sign about Dan Schneider that we failed to notice. Feet fetish? One of the first things that created a scandal around Dan Schneider and his time as a creator on Nickelodeon was his obvious obsession with feet. From being the subject of numerous jokes to being featured in every other scene, you can't watch any Dan Schneider show without seeing or hearing a reference to feet at least a couple of times. Although it didn't seem creepy when most of the people watched these shows while growing up, looking back at those scenes through an adult's perspective makes it really clear that the trend of feet appearance, jokes, and even that time Ariana Grande's character tried sucking her own toe were all expressions of a possible feet fetish by Dan Schneider, which he found a way to include in the shows because he was the creator and writer for most of them. Reacting to the unveiling threads in videos on Dan Schneider's feet fetish, one Twitter user wrote, Look, Nickelodeon has a problem with employing sickos. They've known about the creator, Dan Schneider, for years. I mean, imagine being another adult in the room when he's asking Ariana Grande to suck on her toes. But beyond what was shown on footage from the shows, which includes scenes that a Twitter user has highlighted in a thread, there is so much more proof that points to Dan Schneider's alleged feet fetish. To start with, one of the logos that plays after credits on Dan's shows is literally the outline of a foot. Coincidence? I think not. On social media, Dan Schneider can be found making multiple jokes about feet on his personal media accounts, as well as the accounts he's in control of. When the spin-off show Sam and Cat first aired in 2013, the official Twitter page announced a new episode in a very off-putting way that raised a lot of brows even back then. The page posted, Sam and Cat tomorrow, right on the bottom of your foot. Take a pic and use hashtag Sam and Cat Saturday. We'll retweet and follow until our fingers get sore. The phrasing of the tweet was entirely wrong. And years after, more evidence of Dan Schneider's obsession with feet were released. People have connected the dots and figured out that Dan had probably given the instruction for the post or written it himself because feet pictures are the most random thing ever. As one Twitter user puts it, it's clear that Dan Schneider has a foot fetish, and it's also clear that he fulfills his foot fetish by forcing underage girls to do awkward, supposedly funny, feet-related shit on the shows he creates. The guy is the R. Kelly of children's television, but the sexualization of his cast and their characters didn't end at feet jokes and feet content, and it definitely didn't end on set. Dan Schneider is credited as a writer on almost all the episodes of the shows he created for Nickelodeon, and this means that a lot of the offbeat jokes and inappropriate content can be credited to him. In the dialogue for most of his shows, there's a ton of sexual innuendos and clever but inappropriate puns that are infused randomly. And with the realization of how creepy Dan Schneider actually was, it's super uncomfortable to think that he had minors repeating those lines on set. A YouTube comment reads, I never really thought of Victorious as a kid show. I figured it was supposed to be for middle or high schoolers instead because of all the dirty jokes. It felt like a slightly more grown-up show geared towards the older crowd that grew up on iCarly. As I'm the same age as the cast, it just felt like less raunchy TV geared towards my age group rather than children. But the content was, in fact, geared towards children because it was created for a station that caters to a younger audience. Away from the main shows, there are also some disturbing scenes recorded for Ariana Grande's character's channel, which include a clip of her powering water on herself in an obviously sexually charged scenario. The possibility that the underage cast was made to deliver lines and act out scenes without knowing the adult context is just another troubling example of how big a creep Dan Schneider is. And it gets even worse. There has been one consistent factor in all the allegations put up by fans and the media, such as a publication by Deadline 
Deadline writer, Nellie Andreva, who mentioned that Dan Schneider was under a cloud of suspicion over the treatment of some younger stars of his shows. This factor is the numerous accounts of inappropriate behavior by Dan in what should otherwise have been professional settings. Jeanette McCurdy's memoir, I'm Glad My Mom Died, details her traumatic childhood experience, and a huge chunk of that includes working at Nickelodeon. More specifically, her interactions with a man she refers to as the creator. Fans have since deduced that Dan Schneider is the creator. As one Twitter account wrote, we believe Jeanette McCurdy was referring to Dan Schneider as the creator in her forthcoming book. We have been talking about Schneider repeatedly for many years. And Jeanette had a lot to say about his inappropriate and abusive behavior in her memoir, as she reveals some creepy things that we didn't notice until it was too late. In one particular instance, Jeanette talks about a rather eventful dinner that she was forced to have with the creator, alone. At the dinner, he gave her an unsolicited shoulder massage and forced her to engage in underage drinking. His reasoning for having her drink alcohol was that the victorious kids get drunk together all the time. The iCarly kids are so wholesome. We need to give you guys a little edge. He was the creator, writer, and producer of her show. He had the power to make or break her career, so she indulged his demand. But Jeanette wasn't the only victim of Dan Schneider's numerous attempts to cross the line. Behind-the-scenes footage of The Amanda Show that recently resurfaced included photos of Schneider, who was in his mid-40s, in a hot tub with Amanda Vines, who was barely a teenager and looked terribly uncomfortable. And there were other footage of him hugging and basically inappropriately touching other young young actresses who worked on his shows. It apparently had gotten so uncomfortable for the young girls that they had to create special signs whenever Dan approached them, and they were alone or out of sight for others to notice. And if you don't believe any of the fan theories and footage, it would interest you to note that when the New York Times interviewed sources for their story on Dan's return to television, several sources alleged that the producer frequently interacted with the child actors from Nickelodeon outside of their official work hours. What was the reason? Well, you can pick any of the overflowing lists of allegations against the creepy creator, including the claims of his abusive nature. And one of those claims is detailed in Jeanette McCurdy's tell-all memoir. The vivid first-person point of view in Jeanette McCurdy's memoir has recently become a reference point for tons of online allegations made against Dan Schneider. She talked about how he was mean-spirited, terrifying, and controlling, which is practically a recipe for abuse. And she wrote about how he made grown men and women cry with his insults and degradation. As she told the Washington Post, people accepted his behavior in a bus because everyone was scared of losing their job. And this adds up because Jeanette's memoir also mentioned how she constantly felt on edge, desperate to please, terrified of stepping out of line. And just for context to how creepy and terrifying Dan was, her memoir includes a situation where Dan attempted to manipulate Jeanette. At the same dinner where he gave her an unsolicited massage and made her drink alcohol, Dan Schneider was quick to remind Jeanette that she was getting a spin-off show because he chose her. As she recounts in her memoir, he said, I could give a new show to anyone, you know, but I didn't choose anyone. I chose you. And Jeanette is not the only one who remembers his manipulative and creepy traits. When the New York Times spoke to Arthur Gradstein, a writer and producer who worked with Dan Schneider, he said that Schneider could be generous and validating, and it was exciting to be around his talent and passion for creating entertainment. But he was also unreasonably demanding, controlling, belittling, with a willful disregard for boundaries or workplace appropriateness. And honestly, that's all we need to know that all the creepy signs were true but apparently Nickelodeon didn't think so. In 2018, amidst accusations and footage of Dan Schneider's improper behavior towards the minors he had worked with on Nickelodeon shows, the network ended their contract with the creator. However, the contract ending was not on grounds of the allegations, as an excerpt of the joint statement released by Nickelodeon and Dan Schneider reads, Following many conversations together about next directors and future opportunities, Nickelodeon and our longtime creative partner, Dan Schneider, Schneider's Bakery, have agreed to not extend the current deal. Since several Schneider's Bakery projects are wrapping up, both sides agree that this is a natural time for Nickelodeon and Schneider's Bakery to pursue other opportunities and projects. The statement continues. In days after the statement was released, an anonymous source told Page Six that Dan Schneider actually got a $7 million payout to leave Nickelodeon. And that's a huge payday for someone who has been accused so explicitly. 
Although the allegations against Dan Schneider and online threads calling out his predatory nature have not yielded a conviction or court case, we can't ignore just how creepy he was. In fact, only recently, on the 25th of August, 2022, Alexa Nicholas, one of the cast members in another of Dan's hit shows, Zoe 101, was spotted protesting outside the Nickelodeon headquarters. A popular pop culture news page, Pop Base, on Twitter reported the protest, saying, Zoe 101 star Alexa Nicholas protest outside Nickelodeon headquarters. The signs include, Nickelodeon didn't protect me, eat predators, and sickelodeon. And if this doesn't add any flame to the fires of allegations against the former Nickelodeon exec, it will definitely make the internet and the public take a second and third look at Dan Schneider's actions over the years and the very inappropriate content in his shows. Although Viacom CBS, which is now known as Paramount Global, the parent company of Nickelodeon, conducted an investigation on Dan Schneider and his allegations, the findings stated there was no evidence of sexual misconduct. However, during the investigation, some of his interviewees did mention that he was known to exhibit questionable behavior at work and to his co-workers after hours. And that leaves room for us to believe there's an element of truth in the accusations against Dan Schneider, aka the creator. Do you think Nickelodeon chose to protect Dan Schneider rather than speak out for the actors? Why do you think it took so long for the public to notice and acknowledge the creepiness of Dan Schneider? Let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this story, feel free to like this video and subscribe to The Chronicle for more inside stories on your favorite celebrities.